Hello, my name is Mathieu Jackson. I'm a hemophilia patient with Hemophilia B from Montreal, Canada. I'm Vice President of the Canadian Hemophilia Society and I work at the Centre of Excellence on Partnerships with Patients and the Public at University of Montreal. Welcome to this video on von Willebrand disease. Von Willebrand disease is the most common coagulopathy or bleeding disorder in the world. As we will see throughout this three video series, von Willebrand disease is more complex than hemophilia A and B because the concerned protein called von Willebrand factor has different functions. In this first video, we will see the different functions of the von Willebrand factor. This is necessary in order to understand the second video in this series, which will address the different types of von Willebrand disease. In the third and last video, we will discuss the treatment for von Willebrand's disease. Look at the HemoKT channel for these other videos. People with von Willebrand disease, or VWD, have blood clotting defects. This means they experience prolonged bleeding because their blood has difficulty coagulating. In people with VWD, Platelets have difficulty organizing correctly in order to perform coagulation. This difficulty is due to the fact that the von Willebrand factor, which participates in some fundamental steps of the action of platelets, is altered. In addition, von Willebrand factor is essential to maintaining the coagulation factor 8 concentration at normal levels. To understand what these problems are, it is important to know the functions that are performed by the von Willebrand factor, as well as some basic information on how blood clotting occurs. Here we can see the representation of a blood vessel. Although there are many components present in the blood, in this video we will focus only on those who are related to von Willebrand disease. In addition to the blood vessel, we must also mention the endothelial cells, which are cells that line the interior surface of all of our blood, blood vessels. Below these cells are the subendothelial collagen fibers, which, as we shall see, are extremely important in this stage of blood clotting. We can also see a platelet. It is important to mention that the platelets that are in our blood circulation are in an inap inactivated stage. This means they are not yet participating in blood clotting. We should also note that platelets have structures on their surface that are an important part of the steps of coagulation. This is why some of them need to be shown here, such as the collagen receptor and two other proteins with slightly more complicated names in which we will not go into detail here. For the purpose of this video, it is sufficient to note that these play an important role in the process of platelet activation. Now, let's take a look at the protein called von Willebrand factor, which has many functions related to coagulation. We can think of the von Willebrand factor, the platelets, and the other components of coagulation as being different pieces of a puzzle, where each piece fits into another. If you, think it, if you think of it as a puzzle, one function of the von Willebrand factor is to connect to the sub, subendothelial collagen, which is the structure being shown here. Note that the platelet also has a collagen receptor. Because of this, it also creates a type of collagen binding that is very similar to that of von Willebrand factor. Another function of the von Willebrand factor is to bind to platelets, and this happens through the interaction of this part of the von Willebrand factor with this part of the platelet, and through this region with this other region. Finally, the von Willebrand factor performs yet another function that is extremely important. It is responsible for transporting and stabilizing the coagulation factor 8. Without von Willebrand factor, there is a decrease in the amount of factor VIII, and this, this decrease may be higher or lower depending on the type of von Willebrand disease. 
it is important to understand that von Willebrand's disease and hemophilia are different pathologies. We will see in the second video of this series that, in some situations, there can be misunderstandings regarding this, 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 this distinction, which can lead to mistakes in diagnosis between hemophilia A and some types of von Willebrand disease. Now that we have seen these functions, it is important to know that von Willebrand factor is produced and stored in the endothelial cells and also in the platelets. You could say that these cells store the stock of von Willebrand factor and are continuously releasing it into the bloodstream. This ensures the availability of von Willebrand factor when it is needed to participate in blood coagulation. We will talk about this in the third video of this series, when we will see the treatment options for people affected by von Willebrand's disease. So, how do all of these components participate in blood clotting? Here we can see some platelets and some von Willebrand factor proteins. It all starts when von Willebrand factor binds to the subendothelial collagen. However, as we can see, the collagen is protected just below the endothelial cells. Thus, von Willebrand factor cannot bind to the collagen because it is blocked by endothelial cells. This natural barrier is of fundamental importance because it prevents blood from clotting when there is no need for coagulation. Therefore, as long as the blood vessel does not suffer any kind of trauma, there will be no connection between von Willebrand factor and collagen fibers. However, when an injury occurs that causes a blood vessel to rupture, the endothelial cells are destroyed and the collagen fibers become exposed. In this example, we will remove this endothelial cell to simulate what occurs in our organism when this happens. The removal of the endothelial cell exposes the collagen that was hidden. Now that the collagen is exposed, the von Willebrand factor will be able to bind through its collagen receptor. This connection is very important because it causes a change in the structure of the von Willebrand factor in this region, causing its activation. Now that this region is activated, it will interact with this part of the platelet. As a consequence, it is now easier for the platelet to bind to this subendothelial collagen through its own collagen receptor like this. Binding with the collagen causes the platelet to become activated, resulting in some changes, such as the activation of this part, as we see here. As a consequence of this activation, another von Willebrand factor that is present in the bloodstream will attach to the platelet as if it were a corresponding piece of the puzzle. Now that the first platelets and the first factors have been activated, a cascade event will happen where more and more platelets will be activated along with more von Willebrand factor, which works to stop the bleeding. The buffer which is formed by the platelets is called primary hemostasis. However, this buffer made of platelets is very weak and breaks easily. It is because of this that there is another complementary system in our organism that will make this clot much stronger. This complementary system is called secondary hemostasis. This step is dependent on other clotting factors that were not shown in this video, but are explained in another video we made called What is Hemophilia? which you can also find on the HemoKT YouTube channel. Secondary hemostasis results in the production of fibrin, 
which, together with the platelets, is responsible for the formation of a strong clot. The goal of all these events is to create blood clotting. As we have seen, several components work in groups, where one is responsible for connecting the other as if they were pieces of a puzzle, which extend along the fractured blood vessel to stop bleeding. Just as a puzzle is incomplete when a piece is missing, blood clotting will also be compromised if any component is missing. We hope this video has clarified the roles of the von Willebrand factor and its importance for coagulation. This information is, ins is essential to understand the contents of the next videos in this three-part series on von Willebrand's disease, in which we will talk about the different types of VWD and the available treatments. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button for future videos on the HemoKT channel on bleeding disorders and related topics. Goodbye.